Hmm. Well, it's mailbag time. Uh, well, there's not actually a mailbag, but th there are a lot of viewer comments. Well, it's viewer comment time, and today I have a comment from Richard on my video about homosexuality, the Bible, and nuance. In that video, I said that people don't choose their sexual orientation. Like, you can choose how you live, but gay people don't choose to be gay. But Richard wasn't so sure about this. He wrote, If it's not a choice, then it's genetic. But how does the gene get passed on? Okay, well, hang on, let me stop you right here. First of all, choice and genetic are not the only options. There are a lot of things that make you you that you didn't choose but are also not genetic. One theory says that sexual orientation is determined by certain brain structures, which are affected by hormones during development in the womb, which are in turn affected by environmental factors. That's one example of a biological explanation which is neither a choice nor genetic. But you know, there are people who think that there could be a genetic link. So theoretically, what if we did discover a genetic component? Richard wants to know, how does the gene get passed on if homosexuals are not passing on their genes? That's a reasonable question. But for one thing, many do pass on their genes. Think about all of the gay people throughout history who married someone of the opposite sex because of pressure from family or society. Think about modern gay couples who choose to conceive in other ways. And think about bisexuals who are attracted to both men and women. They could marry and have kids and you might not even know that they're not straight. Okay, but just for the sake of argument, imagine that we discovered that sexual orientation was 100% genetic and all gay and bi people around the world stopped having biological kids. The gene, if it did exist, could still get passed on. Remember when you studied recessive traits, where, for instance, having one copy of a gene might have a reproductive advantage, even if having two copies of the same gene makes you less likely to reproduce? Well, in a similar way, some people have theorized that maybe being a sibling of a gay person has a reproductive advantage. So, like, you know, maybe, maybe genetically speaking, it's good for a straight person's kids if they have a gay aunt or uncle who doesn't have kids of their own and can help defend the family or something. So a theoretical gay gene could still get passed on by straight people with one copy of it, even if having two copies of it meant that you were gay and didn't have kids. I mean, that's the basic idea, even though genetics is actually usually a lot more complicated than that. But ultimately, that's a lot of what ifs. Bottom line, I don't know if sexual orientation has a genetic component or not. We still don't know why some people are gay. But I do know that it's not a choice. How can I be so sure about that? Simple. Because I'm gay, and I didn't choose it. Hey, thanks for watching. I've written more about the choice question in my book, Torn, Rescuing the Gospel from the Gays vs. Christians Debate. Other resources are in the video description. If you like this video, consider supporting me on Patreon or hiring me as a speaker. Got a question? Let me know. It's all at geekyjustin.com.